Hello friends, my name is Michelle and welcome to this video. Today it's late June arrival because everything I do on this channel is late these days and that's fine. I read seven books in June, which is pretty decent in my humble, humble opinion, but I'm gonna try and go through them fairly quickly so we don't have to sit here for half an hour as per usual. We're gonna start with the first book that I read in June, which was Confessions by Kanaya Minato. I finished this in June. I started in May. This was our Spooky Bitches book club pick for May and I started in May. I just didn't finish it until I think the 1st of June on the dot. This is about a classroom and their teacher whose daughter dies and she knows who did it because it wasn't just like a random, you know, accidental death. She knows who did it and she decides to take revenge. It's some people in the class. And this is divided into sections where we learn essentially the same story but from different points of view and every time we move along with the story a little bit. And it's a very subtle, slow burner that I really enjoyed. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I really liked the writing. It took me about the first section to get used to the writing, but once I get used to the writing, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very clever. It wasn't like mind-blowingly shocking or something, because you kind of can tell where it's going, especially if you are a fan of the genre, but I really enjoyed it nonetheless. I was taken by it and I read it fairly quickly which is always great. I mean it's short but I still read it very quickly so if you're into that kind of thing I would really recommend this. It was nice. The second book I finished in June was The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon which is the fourth book in the Bone Season series and I read this just because my girlfriend picked it out for me. I don't know when else I would have gotten around to reading it but because it's so giant but I did it okay and I really liked it. I was a little apprehensive about some parts. I didn't love the pacing as much as I did in The Bone Season and in The Song Rising. Those two are my favorite in the series, then The Mask Falling and then The, Mar Mar uh, <laughs> then the Mime Order, sorry. Uh, but this one was really fun, especially the second half was really, really, really good. The first half was like, can we get a fucking move on? I'm not that invested, like, what are we doing here for 100 pages for nothing? But <laughs> whatever that's my own personal issues sometimes I do struggle with the pacing in these books but I know that that's on me because I know that other people absolutely adore that kind of shit just and like in this series I just want a little bit more let's get to it you know but the second half of this book in particular was absolutely amazing I adored the last 150 or so pages everyone's like losing their minds over a particular chapter Evanfall Good shit. I can tell you. Good shit. I really like this. I think I gave it a 4 out of 5, not a 5 out of 5, like I did the song Rising. I could be wrong because it's been so long. But in my heart right now, thinking about it, it's a 4. So I really enjoyed it. If you don't know what the series is about, what the series is about, it's about clairvoyants who have special powers uh, living in London and around the world and the organization? Something called Sion who controls them and tries to snatch them off the streets and it's about at this point the revolution against that and yeah. After that I read Mooncakes and once again why do I keep reading graphic novels when I do not understand graphic novels? I don't know. Again the same thing happened as with the map to the sun I think. So Mooncakes has really great representation, it has a really great art style but I thought the plot was rather like lost, <laughs> honestly, to me at least. I really wanted more and I think I just need to stop trying. Graphic novels are just not for me because I find, find these graphic novels that sound really amazing and completely right up my alley and I probably would have given them five stars if they were in normal, normal, novel format, but like in a graphic novel format they just don't work for me because I'm a dumb bitch when it comes to graphic novels. I just can't. I want to sum up the story of Mooncakes for you, but I cannot. One of the characters is a werewolf, there's some kind of creature. I don't even remember it that well because it just didn't struck a chord with me. So I really need to just stop trying because like it's not fair. To these books for me to read them and then rate them and review them in these wrap-ups when I don't even understand them properly. They're just not for me. So we just like, I'm just gonna not do that <laughs> anymore. I think the only graphic novel that I really enjoy to the point where I gave it five stars and it's my favorite graphic novel of all time is Persepolis. That's the only one I have ever truly loved and that I've tried many times so maybe it's time to move on and do something else with my life, you know what I mean? But I tried again unsuccessfully, I think I gave it a 2 or 3, I don't know. Um, it was just not my cup of tea. 
That's on me. The next one I read was a Czech translation. Okay, bear with me. Um, this is by Frederick Backman. I think in English it's... Ooh, grandma says... My grandma... What? What is it in English? It is something. Let me figure out what it is in English. My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry, okay? I read the Czech translation of that because I received it for Christmas about two years ago. I had a prompt from uh, Jesse's TBR cards that was to read something with elder characters that are over 60. And I read this thinking that it's gonna be about the grandma, but it was really about the granddaughter, <laughs> really. Because the grandma dies pretty early on in the book, like maybe 20 pages into it. And then it's about the granddaughter experiencing grief and loss for the first time and how she moves through it or doesn't and what she needs for it and everything to do with it. It's a, it has a touch of magical realism, which I really appreciated. But overall, the book kind of just went by and then ended and it's not like I took anything special from it. It was a three star for me. It's fine. Like, the, <laughs> the grandma is so crude and like in the memories as well, like, you kind of can just adore her because the shit she says sometimes, you just don't vibe with it if you're like socially aware in any kind of way. But whatever, she was the grandma, that's not the point. It's about the granddaughter trying to deal with that. And you know, this is like an, this is like a very typical like, Scandinavian drama mixed with comedy where like it's supposed to be funny and everyone is quirky and everything quirky happens And it's fine. Like I enjoyed it to a degree. It was really smooth to read. It was really easy to read It didn't make me feel any big emotions. <laughs> I will say that even though grief usually does do it for me But not in this book. It was fine. I didn't adore it though. In another attempt to fulfill this prompt. I also read Mooncakes uh, for this prompt but because I didn't love it as much because there are elderly lesbians in Mooncakes. Because I didn't love it as much, I wanted to try something else. Then that didn't really have the elderly character for like most of it. So I wanted to read something that really actually had a elderly protagonist. And I read The Four Profound Weaves based on a recommendation from Sage and it was great. I really did enjoy this one. I think I gave it four stars. I'm pretty sure. If not, um, don't quote me on it. No, I gave it four stars. I gave this four stars. This is set in a world that I'm not even going to try and explain to you because you just kind of have to roll with the punches as you read it. This is about <laughs> two characters that both are elderly and one of them has finally decided to live his life as a man and he does not have a name, but he wants to have a name. So he wants to find the weaver of these carpets, because in this world there are four kinds of carpets that are profound, <laughs> you know, and uh, they have deeper meaning. So he wants to find the weaver that uh, wove the carpet of wind, which I think is the carpet of transformation, and he wants this person to give him a name. So he goes to try and find this weaver together with the weaver's niece. I think it was a niece family member <laughs> and they go together many things happen that honestly I was reading this and I was like this should not be making any sense to me and like technically it's not but somehow it works I really enjoyed it I really loved the writing I was particularly intrigued by this book because it was written by a person who is originally from Ukraine which is right next to me and it's always very interesting to me to see queer people from these countries like my country or Ukraine Russia, Hungary, Czech Republic, you know, because those are countries around me and homophobia is very alive and well. I'm really interested in voices from these countries because I feel like they have a lot to offer and I was not disappointed. The writing was really interesting. I really loved it. It was really great. I really enjoyed it. The story wrapped up neatly. And when I say neatly, I don't mean that it had a convenient ending, just that it was neat. It was <laughs> The writing was neat. Um, the story was neat. The characters were neat. I just really enjoyed my time with this one. It was super short. But it felt like a full-fledged, beautiful novel, so... Amazing times. The second to last the book that I read was The Chosen and the Beautiful, which is a great Gatsby retelling, told from the point of view of Jordan, which is uh, who is a character in The Great Gatsby. And this was my most anticipated release of 2021. Um, needless to say, um, I gave it how many stars? I gave it three stars. <laughs> But that's probably because I just didn't want to be that mean. <laughs> I wanted this to be a much bigger challenge to the original text of The Great Gatsby. I wanted to really challenge that text. Meanwhile, 
which is not a bad thing, but it felt like Grey Gatsby fanfiction a little bit, where it just followed the same things, it still centered the same themes, it still did the same thing, just from a different character. And granted, the character is really interesting. The chapters I enjoyed the most were the chapters where we got to explore her and her heritage, and where we got flashbacks that didn't exist in the canon of The Great Gatsby, as we know it, and the chapters that didn't center around the things that The Great Gatsby centers. Those were the parts that I enjoyed the most, and I saw such brilliance in those chapters, and I do not understand the need to be limited by the Great Gatsby canon, but that's the author's choice. I'm sure it was done on purpose, it's just not what I was expecting from this book. I just wanted... Um, I don't think saying I wanted more is uh, the right thing to say, I just wanted something different from this book. I wanted it to do different things than it actually did. I did enjoy the writing, I thought the writing was absolutely beautiful and I will definitely be reading more from Nevo, absolutely, 100%, but this was just not it for me. It was very slow and again I know the story of Greg Gatsby really well because I used to be obsessed with it in high school, so <laughs> don't judge me, but feel free to judge me, but it just wasn't what I wanted, which is on me. And yeah, the other thing that I really didn't like were specific, like, weirdly worded things about uh, Jewish people. Sometimes there was a remark, I read an arc, by the way, this might not be in a final product, but there were some things that just, like, felt a little, like, why were they there? And uh, what I didn't like was how, <laughs> actually, Greg Gatsby's identity was handled. Greg Gatsby, he's just Gatsby, oh my god, his name is Jay Gatsby, not Greg Gatsby, who am I? I don't know. I mean, Jay Gatsby's identity, it is revealed very, revealed, even the fact that the word that I want to use is revealed with this is kind of fucked up in my opinion. So it is said very much towards the end of the novel that he is actually indigenous, and in the arc it mentions uh, two nations that uh, he's from, not even the same one, which means that it was really poorly researched and it feels incredibly disingenuous. So towards the end we suddenly learn that he is indigenous and I have read many reviews, not many, but I have read some reviews where it mentions that that should be explored and I agree with that. It should be explored, it shouldn't be a note in the margins that like, oh yeah, and by the way, he's half black, half indigenous mother. And then uh, his behavior right after this being described as crazy chanting, it just rubs you the wrong way. So those were some instances where I was like, why is it here? Like, why is it like this in here? Those were things I genuinely didn't like, the rest I know is just me, not the author. Just expected different things, but, you know. Maybe my uh, next year's most anticipated release will be a five star, or at least my second half of the year's most most anticipated release will be a five star. Let's pray. <laughs> and the last book I read in June was actually a book I really adored and it was The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This was incredible. This is about a person who essentially her job is to hop between parallel universes to collect data and she can only travel to worlds where her a clone? Where, her, where she doesn't exist anymore, okay? So she has to be dead in the universe she's traveling into. Otherwise, the space between worlds will literally shred her. She will die on the way. And one day she goes on a mission and guess what? Her version is not dead, but she fights and somehow survives. This was... Oh my god, okay. First of all, it's sapphic. I didn't even know that this was sapphic when I came into this book. And I was like, why did I not know this? Because it's beautiful. The pining and the relationship and what happens here in this book from that perspective, amazing, show-stopping, oh my god, I loved it. And second of all, the writing in this book was my favorite thing about it, probably. I mean, everything that happens in this book is so cool, but the writing probably takes the cake. It is so beautiful and gorgeous and just the right amount of everything. And another thing that I loved, I could gush about this book, you can tell that this was probably my favorite of the month. Um, Another thing that I really love, this book just always knew when to move on. Like, the second, you couldn't, you didn't get the chance to feel tired of a setting or tired of whatever they were discussing because it just knew. Makaya Johnson just knew when to move the story along. Every single time, in the perfect moment, the story moved along and it always moved in the perfect direction. I wanted the ending to punch me in the face, kind of like... 
not necessarily in a tragic way, just like in a explodey way, which happened somewhere around here, I think, and I cried, and then the ending didn't do it. <laughs> So I was like, I wish I got the same kind of catharsis at the end as I did uh, like halfway through the book or towards the end, which didn't happen, which is fine. It's still my favorite. Uh, it was just, this was brilliant. I, If I had to recommend you any of the books that I read this month, I would recommend this. It didn't get as much hype as it deserves. Still not getting as much hype as it deserves. It is brilliant. I cannot wait to read anything and everything that Micaiah Johnson ever writes and publishes. Like, give it to me. This was perfect. Those are all the books I read in June. Please let me know down in the comments if you also read any of these or if I made you want to put them on your TBR or put off of your TBR. I don't know. Take off your TBR. What is English? <laughs> I don't know. If uh, you want to leave an emoji, please leave me like, is there like a planet emoji? If there's a planet, some kind of planet emoji, you know, for this, because she's essentially hopping between like not planets, but worlds. So like, just leave me like a spacey planet emoji something if you don't want to leave a comment. Leave a like if you enjoyed this babble. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want to find me anywhere else, all my socials are linked down below. You're welcome to be my friend. <laughs> I love friends. And yeah, that's all from me for now. And in true Ella Ripley fashion, I am signing off.